So this is going to be a live reading of a story sketch that I have uh, for Hermione Granger. It's called The Potions Queen. In another life, uh, Hermione's first love is the sweetness of uh, peeled oranges upon her nose. A scent tells more about a thing or a person's essence than words or even appearances ever will. That's how animals experience the world and each other. A gift which forever alienates her from uh, normality. At Hogwarts, uh, she's elected a Slytherin. The other students are wary of her, singling her out as a freak due to the offbeat aura she radiates. But there is one who gets her attention. It's uh, not Harry Potter, it's not Ron Weasley, it's Draco Malfoy. Draco, out of all people, bullies her especially hard. At first, unwilling to admit his true feelings for this uh, enchantress. But she sees past his uh, tough guy facade. Enduring all his blows and sneers and insults with a faint tenderness uh, from her eyes. Trusting her instincts, uh, Hermione sneaks into the inventory of uh, potions ingredients. And uh, using her uh, enhanced uh, sense of smell, she uh, concoct, uh, makes a love uh, mixture to win over Draco's heart. She arranges a meeting with him in the halls, but her hands quiver from sheer nervousness in uh, pouring the tea. And uh, she ends up uh, spilling it, the cup all over the floor. For the first time, uh, she cries her heart out in front of another person, heartbroken from losing the chance to be loved back. Why are you sad? Uh, Draco asks her. She tells him what was meant to happen, revealing how he makes her feel. Like the peace you'll find exploring the forest alone in the uh, uh, night. After running back to her bed, uh, Hermione rips out the pages of her diary, one by one. The pages fall in like abandoned uh, flower petals, only for Draco to have followed her to her dorm to share a hug. A gesture he's thought only the sentimental, sentimentally uh, foolish uh, do until now. I'll skip over the next part because I, I haven't even written it yet, but here. So... A few, few years later, uh, Hermione urges Draco not to join the Death Eaters, fearing for his safety. But Draco is honor sworn to his family from a pact that his uh, father had made with uh, Voldemort before he was even born. She does her best to protect him, obtaining a palantir, which is a crystal ball, from the black market to oversee his well-being. Sadly, Draco gets uh, captured by the Ministry of Magic while on a mission with other Death Eaters to raid uh, Gringotts Bank for Hufflepuff's uh, cup. The Ministry wants to make an example out of Draco, so they order his execution. Hermione cries and cries. She pleads with the Ministry and the court for Draco's life. He's a good lad who's been coerced into something evil. Much of the jurors are moved by her like a sheer display of uh, emotion, but Dolores Umbridge uh, protests that if uh, principle were, were overruled by emotion and uh, sentimentality, there would be no such thing as objectivity, no uh, law, and no justice to be had. And so uh, Draco is uh, publicly uh, sentenced to death, and the Avada Kavada curse gets uh, cast, but Hermione uh, bursts past the gates and sacrifices herself for his life. She wakes up in a hospital from a coma to find that she's failed. But there's a visit from uh, his father, uh, Lucius Malfoy, who commends her act of uh, bravery for his son, and Hermione uh, fluctuates uh, between anger over the family pact, which has dragged Draco down to his death, and then gratitude over having known the one person in this world who's touched her heart. She'll do anything for him. So resting his hand upon her head, Lucius swear swears her in as part of the Malfoy family. There shall be real justice, he says. Hermione has dreams of uh, starting a family with like a Draco. It still haunts her. She discovers uh, in her research that once it was possible to breathe life back into the, into the dead, at the cost of uh, permanently losing all memory of attachment to that person. As long as Draco could be alive again, well, it's no, it's no small feat. She'll need some help. So Lucius, uh, he pulls some strings so that Hermione ends up uh, getting her the role of the potions master in Hogwarts. 
all an adult now, um, Hermione uh, spellbinds her uh, class, enthralling the uh, first years with her uh, natural talent at, uh, you know, concocting, like, uh, you know, polyjuice, like, uh, potions, for example. But anyways, in her off time, though, following the instructions of Voldemort for his Death Eaters, she secretly grows black dragons into maturity. 